realised after John has actually gone home that there are some notes that I need to pass on to you because this whole process is a bit more complicated than I'd realised. Um, you do need a paint rag. You need a lot of water. I'm not sure that's in the text. John actually is preparing a downloadable PDF to go in parallel with his demonstration. So all of the necessary information ought to be in that. And of course, you can view it before you come to the workshop. And you can also use it again after the workshop when you go home and you sort of do a, a private pouring um, by yourselves. But I hope that everyone's going to enjoy doing a public pouring where you've got a group of people who can sort of fire off each other and it would, would be helpful to everyone, I think. So I'd better just go through my notes here. Um, these bags, I've said that. Um, uh, if you don't have all the gear but you're interested in the process, you could come as a as a, a, a as an audience, you could just sit in the background and watch what the active uh, participants are actually doing. And, and of course, if you forget some of the gear, you just won't be able to do it. Now, one of the little things that I want to mention to you is we got these little pots with lids from um, I think they came from Woolworths. Now. These are quite good for storing any kind of liquid paint or any leftover paint because they have a lid. And they're big enough to do a clean pour. They hold about the right amount of paint. Now, these larger ones are probably as large as you would need to do a dirty pour because you're, you're restricted by the size <coughs> of the baking tray, and this is the biggest baking tray that we could get. So just to give a bit of continuity, I just want to show you John's clean pour again, because that's of course dry now, and I think it's, it's really attractive. I think it might end up on the wall somewhere because it's such a, a nice, clean, abstract sort of uh, look. and. When you get to that part of the video, it's interesting to see how he did it. He, he dribbled the paint into sort of channels so that they didn't run into it, the colours didn't run into each other quite so much. So that would be the first thing that I would try to do if I was doing this exercise. I have done my very own pouring thing in a slightly different way. And this is, this is one of the Fredericks boards which are eight inches by eight inches. Probably a good size to start off on, I think, because they're small. And they, you can't put the little tacks into them because they're a board rather than a canvas on a stretcher. So you need to make sure that whatever you do bring will fit into the baking tray that you have. Now, the technique used for that pouring was to pour the uh, reddish brown colour and then while it was still w a wet puddle to dribble the black into it and then drag it along with a brush so that it's it's not um, it, it's not an automatic happening it's been fiddled with a little bit by the human hand now most of what you do when you're doing this uh, process is accidental so <coughs> It's doubtful if you do a masterpiece whether you can claim that it's actually your own work. It's a sort of an accident, and there are good accidents and bad accidents, and probably a bit of practice needed to work out how to get the kind of effects that you want. Um, so I think I've, I've told you that John is uh, providing a PDF downloadable file that goes through everything that he did. Now, on that file also you will find 
a contact email for John um, if you may want to ask him a question or I hope some of you might like what he's doing and send him an email saying great job John or something just very short like that. Um, you'd be surprised how isolated one feels doing what we've been doing. We're sort of in front of a camera but we don't even know whether you're watching us let alone liking what we're doing. So you could do the same thing with me if you like. Just say you're going in a good direction or something. Now, I will also have an email number that you can um, go to. It will be on the PDF file as well. Um, da -da -da -da. Now, the other thing that, that you might like to do with my email contact is because I have to project the future of uh, the, the programs that we're going to do monthly. Uh, next month we're going to be doing free flow, then after that we'll be doing Atelier Interactive, and then after that, well, I haven't quite got there yet. So maybe it would be nice if people who actually want to know specific things could contact me by email and um, give me suggestions about what you would like to see us actually doing um, in the demonstration form. Now, what we're going to avoid doing is demonstration paintings because although I might need to show you paintings from time to time, uh, it's rather boring watching somebody actually carrying out a painting on, on video. And what we want to show you, what I'm intending to show you is um, the actual techniques, how the paint flows, how it moves under the brush or the palette knife or whatever I'm using. So it'll be very close up, little short video snippets showing you what actual mediums do and what happens when you go through a certain process. And then if you like that, you can then start to incorporate it into your own work using whatever style you personally like to use. And I guess you'll be seeing, people that like thin paint will be seeing some demonstrations of thick paint. And people that like thick paint will be seeing demonstrations of thin paint. So <coughs> everything that I do might not be actually keyed to what you are seeking to do yourself. But I hope that, especially if I get some feedback and say, what about so-and-so? I hope that we can create a situation where I will be able to be actually quite helpful by having very close-up videos just of my hand doing whatever I'm doing and talking about it and actually showing you a, a, a a painting process as we go along. Um, now, my wife asked me to do a little health and safety segment because I made a facetious remark about carbon black being poisonous in California. Now, California has very strict regulations on to, to be applied to all paint tubes. And so everything that's sold in America, because they want to sell it in California as well, has to have the California warnings on it. Now, the state of California believes that carbon black is a carcinogen. Now, I think that is true. Now, if you want to worry about carbon black being a carcinogen, you should give up eating a uh, char-grilled steak because you'll be eating the carbon. But if you can actually get the paint onto your painting, uh, then you're not really endangering yourself very much because it's a fairly laid back kind of uh, danger, I think. And carbon-based blacks have been used ever since the cave paintings were done thousands of years ago. And of course, we don't have records of whether people died of 
charcoal poisoning or something. But I don't think they did. But on the other hand, uh, it's not a bad idea to just have the principle that you want to put the paint on the painting that you're doing, not eat it, don't lick your paintbrush. And there's one uh, actually quite um, useful bit of information I can pass on because uh, cadmium again is a, a poisonous pigment. If you ingest it, now, of course, you're not licking your paintbrush when you're using cadmium, but if you're a smoker and you get cadmium pigment on your cigarette, it will explode when you smoke the cigarette and vaporized cadmium will go into your lungs. So if you want to, <coughs> want to be really safe and you're a smoker, I think you should get one of those very long cigarette holders that, that uh, actresses used to wear many years ago when in sophisticated times when they sort of did that and they had a foot long uh, um, uh, cigarette holder so that the paint would not get onto your cigarette. That's the key point that you need to remember. Um, the business about wearing gloves is really, uh, I don't like wearing gloves, I don't like the feel of it. And as you see, John dutifully wore gloves and then he forgot about them the second time around. And of course you need to wash your hands and all of that sort of stuff, but there really isn't anything that enters your body through your skin except lead-based pigments, which are now off the market. There's no flake white around anymore. And if you were to rub yourself around with some flake white, but remember that uh, Queen Elizabeth used to whiten her face with flake white, actually. So I don't know whether that had a bad effect on her health. It, people didn't know very much about toxicity in earlier times, did they? Anyway, I hope you found that little bit a bit of fun trying to make uh, health and safety a bit light-hearted uh, and sensible at the same time. But please get back to me um, about future programs and about anything about any of the paints that we make that you might sort of wonder about and not be too sure about and you want to sort of ask me questions because that'll give me an opportunity to answer the questions. You can send the questions to me by email. But also, I'd like you to, to email me your telephone number in case when I see the email I don't quite understand it or I might want to talk to you a little bit more about whatever it is you're asking about. And uh, so it's important that I'm able to do that on the phone as well, if you don't mind. Okay, well, I think that pretty much covers what we didn't get into the original video.